Hello and welcome to our morning service today as we join together in the Lord's name uh, online here at uh, St Anne's. It's good to come together. Let me just say a prayer. Gracious Father, as we join together in your name this morning, may you soften our hearts so we may hear your message, draw close to you. And Lord, may you invigorate us and strengthen us as we come in prayer and worship and under your word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing our first hymn, a great modern hymn. Come people of the risen King. We invite you to lift your voices with us as we sing this morning. Come. Come all and tune your hearts to sing to the morning star of grace. From the shifting shadows of the earth, we will lift our eyes to Him. Where steady arms of mercy reach to gather. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. 
It's great to come together and rejoice, isn't it? And know that we are truly people of the risen King Jesus. Our Bible reading today, as we continue through Luke, as we will do for the next uh, few weeks and months, uh, and uh, come under his teaching and his gospel message of Jesus. We're in Luke chapter 4, beginning at verse 17. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as it was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, the Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Then he rolled up the scroll. He gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone were fastened on him. He began to say to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Isn't he Joseph's son? Some said. Jesus said to them, Surely you will quote the proverb to me, Physician, heal yourself. And you will tell me, Do hear in your hometown what we have heard you done in Capernaum. Truly I tell you, he continued, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. I assure you there will be many widows in Israel in Elijah's time when the sky was shut for three and a half years and there was a severe famine throughout the land. Yet Elijah was not sent to any of them, but a widow of Zarephath in the region of Sidon. And there were many in Israel had leprosy in the time of Elisha the prophet. Yet not one of them was cleansed, only Naaman the Syrian. All the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this. They got up, drove him out of town, and took him to, th to the brow of the hill on which the town was built, in order to throw him off the cliff. But he walked through, right through the crowd and went on his way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let me say a prayer. Lord, as uh, you are the God of beginnings... And the God of our ends, we pray that you would walk with us through our life. We thank you for the ministry of Jesus and how through him good news was proclaimed to the poor. Freedom for the captives, vision for those without hope, release for the oppressed and your favour to the world. Brighten our hearts again with that wonderful message of hope. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's not so much the case uh, nowadays, but defenders and midfielders used to have a free tackle at the start of the match. They knew they probably weren't going to get booked or sent off unless they did something really dreadful. I suppose it was like a, a free hit, as it were. And to the striker, they said, beware, I'm here. It's not so much the case now. You know, Mike Dean and all the other referees, they know what's what and they knew what, what was happening. But the the defender or the midfielder had that free free little tackle on the on the striker to say, beware, this is what I'm all about. You know, it was a case of making your mark at the beginning. The mark as you meant to went, go on. Last week we had the message of John the Baptist, didn't we? Preparing the way for Jesus. And after, as Jesus is baptised in a wonderful way, the Holy Spirit descends upon him. He goes into the wilderness. He's tempted by the the evil one, and resists. And then he goes all over Galilee, sharing a message, and is praised by those who hear him. He eventually goes back to his hometown. That's the story that we have today. But what was the message that he had? It's a, actually a message that continues to today. The defender getting the boot in, and Jesus says, this is what I'm all about. Like putting the boot into the devil, saying, this is what I'm standing for, against you. Now he says, this is the deal. 
This is what I'm bringing. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners, recovery of sight to the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. As we go through the rest of the Gospels, you see these sprouting into existence. But there's a wonderful little phrase that's almost unique in ancient writings that's in the passage today. Showing that the story came from a true eyewitness to what happened. He rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, sat down. Because he used to preach, sat down in those days. And what does he say? And everyone in the synagogue was fastened upon him. Their eyes were glued to Jesus. There was an expectation. I suppose that happened wherever he went. An expectation. News about him had got out. The preacher had something different about him. Especially after he read this passage. And say, this is fulfilled today. He's going to be the one who brings the Old Testament prophets, uh, prophecies into realisation. No wonder every eye was fastened upon him. And what's the message? Firstly, good news to the poor. Jesus says that he will proclaim that good news to these people, to the poor people. As we go through the scriptures, through the Gospels, this includes those who had little financially. Jesus deals with the outcasts, the impoverished, the beggars and all the like. The Christian message does bring hope to those who have little that can be through the, the provision of practical help for those who need it. This contradicted the thought of, of the day. A thought that still is around the world, isn't it? That poverty was a curse for the wickedness that you'd done in the past. Or maybe even your family had done in the past. Or your great family in, in the past. Something which came down to you. This is not what Jesus says. He says the opposite, actually. In fact, people would be blessed no matter who they were, rich or poor. And that's why the church has always been at the vanguard of provision over the centuries. And as you read the Gospels, poverty is extended to those who know that they are wealthy financially in this world, but have poverty of spirit, a poverty of character, poverty of hope. Jesus speaks good news to these people too. Wicked people are transformed. Hopeless are brought a future. The sinner is forgiven and restored. I remember a chap at, at uh, Vicar College, Oak Hill in London, called Alex Bedford. He'd been British 125 champion. Uh, and he also worked on the massive jumbo jet engines at Rolls-Royce. He was quite a short fella, quite small. And he was able to get into some of the crevices of the engines to work on them. And eventually because of his good being able to be a motorbike champion. He got his own motorbike shop and he also invented a tiny little thing, an advertising loop, a plastic loop uh, that you could put your key into. And he sold thousands of millions of these things and it made him quite financially okay. Um, but he knew that in a way his life was a mess. His wife had left him uh, and it was all falling apart actually. And he was reading a local paper and he was reading the classified and in there there was an invitation to come to church to find hope. And he thought, right, I'm going. And he ended up going to church. He didn't land in that church, but he landed in another. And though he was financially OK, he felt a poverty of spirit, a poverty of his situation. And God came into his life, drew him into his kingdom. If you want to find out about his story, if you uh, go on uh, YouTube or whatever, and type in Alex Bedford Motorbike, you'll get uh, his story there. But the message is true today. Jesus brings good news to the poor, financially, physically, but also in, in many other ways. Secondly, what does he bring? Freedom to the prisoners and to the oppressed. In the Old Testament and the New Testament times, the Jewish people uh, had... A few times of self-rule, but generally they were under the control of other nations. It was the Romans' turn. Uh, as we have, as we all know very well in Jesus' time, it was the Romans. And was Jesus speaking about a revolution? Freedom to the prisoners, to the oppressed? 
they must have thought, yeah, we, we really hate the Romans. Is this what's going to? Is he going to kick the, the Romans out of the promised land? That's what we might have thought uh, about at that time. A national Messiah. The trouble is, as we go along and find the message of Jesus is not just for the Jewish people. It's for everyone, Jew and Gentile, rich and poor, um, male and female, whoever. The message is for everyone. Universal. About people being released into the kingdom of God from the place of being a prisoner and being oppressed. This release from different powers is going to be clearly exemplified in the next story that we have in Luke 4. If you read on in the next uh, bit but uh, from Luke 31, uh, Luke 4.31 onwards. The di direct deliverance of a man under the control of the de devil. But also we see people delivered from greed. We see people delivered from sickness. The kingdom of God was delivering people and it was much more comprehensive than just leading a nation. In fact, on the cross as Jesus dies as an act of complete weakness, we see true freedom being declared and an eternal promise of glory from the Lord. But this freedom that Jesus proclaims has, has been the impetus for many people over the years who sought to ban slavery in our country and around the world. People like Wilderforce and the other abolitionists who saw the great evil that it was. But the promise of eternal freedom brought hope to those people who worked under the yoke of slavery too. The slaves knew they were in many ways helpless. Many escaped to freedom, that's true. But those who remained looked to an eternal freedom. Christians continue today to work against slavery in its many forms throughout the world. Forced labour, servitude, prostitution, work to pay back unpayable loans. Even in our own country it happens. Depending on how many people are defined, there are between 35 and 45 million slaves in our world today. Christians are still called to end this oppression. The practical and the spiritual things, the oppression and deliverance from, coming together. Recovery of sight to the blind. The eye is a wonderful thing, an absolute wonderful thing. It's a miracle, uh, uh, absolutely. I remember Jenny saying that when she, uh, the biology department at a school, wanted eyes to dissect for um, uh, biology lessons, uh, they would have a word with a dad who was a local butcher, and he would provide a bag full of uh, bull's eyes, not the sweet, but the actual bull's eye, <laughs> so that she could take them to school and then they would cut them up to see what it was like inside. A wonderful thing. Focus, the iris. The optic nerve, the retina, all these things are working together. And when we lose our sight or our eyes deteriorate, it's such a handicap. Jesus in his miracles heals many people. Blind people are on that list. He practically fulfills uh, this promise. But also within that there is a spiritual blindness as well. One of recognition of who Jesus is. In quite a few places, the blind people themselves recognise who Jesus is, but the people around them, those with good eyes, uh, don't understand him. It's very strange. They comprehend, these blind folk, who Jesus is, and in a way have been doubly healed, a spiritual blindness and a physical blindness. Christians have been at work with those physically blind over the years, again turning what the world would consider a curse because of their actions to one of relief in some way or other. But also Jesus is speaking of spiritual blindness as well. Not recognising who he is. Not recognising the work of God in the world. Not recognising the touch of the Holy Spirit on people's lives. Jesus comes to show us practically and spiritually the way of God. In your prayers, pray that you would continue to pray for your spiritual eyes to be opened to the work of God and who Jesus is in the world. And finally, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. You know, as, uh, 
as a, a country we do like to have the immediate don't we we get more and more impatient in modern times we don't like to be waiting around waiting is a thing of the past big queues and all that I suppose that's why fast food is so liked. It comes immediately. Well, almost, doesn't it? And Jesus is saying, today is the day. This is the immediate thing. The favour of the Lord has been declared to you. Why don't you respond? And we get two responses in the passage, don't we? All spoke well of him. Many praised him. They were getting, he was getting a bit of a following. People were starting to think, who is this Jesus fella? And going after him. But others rejected him. In fact, they wanted to do away with him. He's just Joseph's son. He's just like a normal person. There's nothing special about him. In fact, they wanted to go and throw him off a cliff. And you know, there's a, a same response today to who Jesus is. Many would have nothing to do with the ancient Jew. What's he got to do with today? He's of no use. Throw him off a cliff. Others would come to understand that with Jesus, there is direction and hope. There is restoration spiritually and at times physically people are healed. There is true freedom in the kingdom of God. Today is the day of the Lord's favour. I pray that you would come to him and follow him this day. I pray that will be true for each of and every one of us, whether it be for a first time or for many times. You know, if there's anything that's triggered off any thoughts, do drop me a message. Um... I'll leave my email address in the in the links on the on the video to have a word with him. Maybe I can drop some uh, material off to you to finish. I pray this ancient prophecy would be true for us today. This prophecy 600 years before Jesus would be true of our hearts. That through poverty, whatever form, we would find the good news of Jesus. That we would experience the true freedom of living in the kingdom of God, being delivered into it. That we would comprehend and see more and more of who Jesus is and his call on our life. And that we would accept this year, this time, this day, the Lord's faith to us. It's good to be in the kingdom of God. Let me say a prayer. Lord, we pray this day that you would... That we would dwell in your kingdom, your kingdom of favour, your kingdom of love. Open our eyes to the freedom that and life that there is in your son. And Lord, we pray that we would seek your kingdom to come here in the world. And we would be agents of your uh, message of hope in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, we, we continue in a, a, an attitude of prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you that we can come into your presence through what Christ has done for us on the cross. May our prayers come up to you this day. May they be done in accordance with your will and purposes. Gracious Father, we pray for our nation that you would bring healing and peace and strength to those uh, who are in trouble, who are in need, who are in hunger. Help them, Lord God, we pray. Touch their hearts. Touch our nation's heart as well. Deliver it from spiritual blindness. That many again would turn to you and find the true and living God. Pray for an outpouring of your spirit upon our community. The people of Shevington and Crook and Standish Lower Ground. Lord we pray that many would turn to you and find the wonderful peace that there is. In the Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray uh, that would spread into our communities. That our places where we live would be joyful places. Where each serves each other. We pray in Jesus name. Amen. Pray for those going through a time of need of sickness or hardship or injury. In the silence we lift to the Lord those known to ourselves who need a special touch. Lord, for those that we've prayed for, pray your hand of blessing, of healing and strength would be upon them this day. Encourage and bless them, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Shall we join together in the words that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. It's wonderful to come together and pray together and come unto God's word. I pray that, that uh, the favour of the Lord would bless you this day. And may we forever praise and worship the Lord Jesus Christ and crown him in our lives. Lord of all. We're going to stand to sing. Stand. I'm not in church now, but you can sing Crown Him with Many Crowns. Hey! Church, let's sing together this morning. Crown Him with Many Crowns The Lamb upon His throne Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns all music but its own. Awake my soul and sing of Him who died for thee. And hail Him as thy matchless King through all eternity.